this garbage machine is a constant reminder of the eternal struggle and suffering that we experience on this celestial plane that we call existence. But today, I'm going to attempt to make it a little less shitty. A while ago, I already attempted to make a project with this laser and I was going to make a bunch of small sorting boxes but after about two minutes of cutting the entire room filled up with smoke because the exhaust system on that thing just doesn't work they might as well have not included anything and after another minute the lens of the laser got clogged up with smoke or junk or whatever it is because there is no assisted air on the nozzle so to solve that problem I have laid out a few parts that I'm going to go through first there is an adapter that goes on the back of the machine and this got a 3 inch or 60 millimeter diameter uh, opening. To that I'm going to attach with some hose clamp a piece of 3, uh, 3 inch or 60 millimeter hose that's going to go to this inline blower. I'm going to use one with 130 CFM which is a measurement that somebody probably can use. I have no idea what this means but it seemed about right. And that should attach on the other side to more holes. I got about three meters that's gonna go out the window so that should be a lot better. And for the nozzle I have printed this tiny thing. All the printed files by the way are from Singiverse, open uh, license, open source. I'm gonna link them down below. And in here I hope you can see is a radial fan attached and on the sides there are two line lasers that are just glued in there for now. Both of those are three millimeter, uh, three volts I have them in parallel and with some resistors in there I have adapted them to 12 volts. So this entire thing is 12 volt, the blower is 12 volt, so I also have a 12 volt 4 amp power supply. That should be plenty strong enough for this entire apparatus. So let's just start on the back and work our way towards the center or the inside of the machine. Okay, we're now on the back of the machine. This is where the water comes out. As you can see, I'm also gonna have to make some water cooling line because the bucket kind of sucks. But we can now attach the shroud in here and just slide in place. This was printed in two pieces and glued together, so there's a little seam here, but that shouldn't be a problem. The only thing we have to do here, actually, to modify the case, is to mount the motor. And the motor is gonna go right here. And there's, since there's nothing behind the sheet metal, I'm gonna assume, I can just mark the hole position. Like that. I'm gonna start with one. And I'm gonna use these tiny, like not tiny, but those, let's see, um, focus here, M4 uh, screws. And just gonna try and tap this thin sheet metal. Which is probably a silly idea, because I only get about half thread, but on the other hand, that's not going to have to hold a lot of stuff. And if it's going to come loose, I can still attach a knot on the inside. So that went pretty well. As you can see, the screw grabbed. It's on there pretty tight. Once I attach the second screw off screen, it's going to be tight enough for the amount of um, strain that's going to be on there. Uh, there's also a hole behind here, I hope you could see that earlier, it's blocked now, but that's going to be great to allow me to pass the wires through. And once I have everything hooked up and the hose attached with the clamps, I'm going to come back and show you how it works. I recognized like a second later that it's pretty silly of me to say that I'm going to show you how it works, because you know, air gets sucked out through here, through the blower, and then out the other side. It's pretty simple. You're probably going to get that without me pointing that out. But you can see how it's all attached now. I blocked this tiny slit up here. There is the hole in the back here that you can probably barely see that the wires pass through. This hole goes directly to the electronics compartment that's you know behind here. So we're going to have easy access to mains voltage and uh, we'll be able to place our power supply in there. Now for the next step we're going to go to the inside of the machine and attach this assisted air thing to the third mirror mount. Now the inside of the machine is still a mess, but I'm pretty sure that I'm going to remove the bed at some point anyway to replace it with an adjustable, adjustable honeycomb type bed anyway. 
and the rails are also kind of screaming for replacement with linear rails but you know everything at its time so right now I'm gonna attach this one and as you can see I have drilled and tapped for two I think that's M4 or M5 set screws those should be able to attach right hmm. how do I get to those okay one set screw gonna be sufficient but, mm, mm. okay not super happy I did not plan ahead um, so it's hitting a point let's put it down here right here with the nozzle but once I'm gonna remove that frame that shouldn't be a problem anymore maybe I can remove that right now as well yeah, let's try that. Let's see how much important. I mean, I'm gonna guess that every piece in this machine is insanely important because it's built to such a low price. But I'm gonna try removing it anyway. See what happens. So as it turns out, the rail down here was only there to cover up the axis for the stepper mount, which moves in the Y direction. I was actually wondering where that is. Yeah, right here. So now it can move pretty much all the way. And you can see I routed the wire through this hole in the side, which I'm also not sure why it's there. Maybe for a fan? I don't know. I'm gonna need a drag chain sooner or later so it doesn't get caught somewhere. But right now that's gonna be good enough. And over here you can see I have the power supply mounted in there. It is wired into this plug right here, which connects to mains voltage. The pins are, at least on my machine, don't quote me on this, you should probably you should actually always test the leads yourself. Don't believe anything you read online or hear anyone say. But on mine, just for reference, these two are mains voltage and this one is um, neutral. So from right to left, mains, mains, neutral or ground. And on the other side of the power connector, power brick, I have um, the pluses and the negatives wired together. If you're unsure about any of this wiring, my advice would be just don't. Don't open up a high voltage supply, a high voltage system if you're uncertain about low voltage systems. It's just not safe. Just, you know, pay the extra, I don't know how many bucks to get a proper machine that doesn't require you fiddling with it for literally hours and weeks for it to get to a working state. With that done, I'm going to fire it up and see if anything blows up, which is the scientific method for verification. Three, two, one. So as you can probably hear, the fan is working in the back. The laser here. And air. And this is the box that you just saw me cut. As you can see, all the edges are pretty nice. They line up pretty well. Somewhat crisp, a lot better than what I've cut before. And I think that's because the laser beam isn't obstructed by all that smoke anymore. But the most important part is that my basement doesn't smell like burnt wood anymore. And you can still be in it, which is very nice. The next steps are probably going to be replacing the laser lenses because I think those are still a major factor of me losing power in the system. 
and the adjustable bed because um, you can see, I mean, you can't really see it from the camera perspective, but the focal point is somewhere below uh, the bottom surface of the part of the MDF and I can't lower it anymore. So I need to make a table that goes lower so the focal point can be in the middle of the material. But that's going to be something for another video. I hope you found this useful somehow. If you want to see more of the nightmare that this machine is, subscribe, like, do whatever you want basically. Just have a good day. Bye.